Salut everyone, Air Max here. In this video, I'm going to show you what Rocky Linux can do when it comes to gaming and content creation. Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. I had one of my viewers sending me emails and telling me like it would be really great if you could try Rocky Linux. And my first thought was like, I don't think it's going to be a good idea because really what I try to do on this channel is to focus on content creation and gaming. But then I thought about this video I made maybe uh, one month ago where I explained like all the distros are equal if you can optimize them for what you want to actually do with them. So obviously, depending on the base you have, it's going to be a little bit harder or, you know, or a little bit easier. But I would say overall, from whatever base you start from, you could arrive at the same result. So I was like, hey, maybe it could be a good idea for a stream. So I made this stream where I actually tried Rocky Linux. It's a three hours video. I don't want you to go through all of this. But obviously, I had to make a short video to explain really what Rocky Linux is all about. And if you can actually create content and gaming on a distro, which is more supposed to be a, a corporate enterprise class of distro. In case you never heard about Rocky Linux, Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution which is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And the idea of it is that Red Hat kind of like discontinued CentOS. It actually did totally discontinued CentOS. And the community went against this and decided to create Rocky Linux. So Rocky Linux, I would say, is a successor of CentOS, but is maintained by the community and it actually respects, uh, uh, like the way they describe it, like a complete binary compatible release using Red Hat Enterprise, right? So at this point, you literally have a copycat of Red Hat in your hand, which is, in my opinion, awesome. I know a lot of enterprise are using Rocky Linux. It's, it's really solid. It's what I call like a, the definition of a stable distro. And to give you an idea how stable this distro is, we're going to be using Rocky 9 for all our like review here. And then the end of life of this distro is planified for May 31, 2032. So <laughs> in terms of like cycle release and everything, you are solid. If you start on that on paper, you could use it until like 2032 and be finger in the noise in terms of security, stability, like everything. Now you know what Rocky Linux is. Let's jump into it and talk about what I think was really great about this distro. So for the positive, I'm going to start with the fact that there is multiple desktop environment available out of the box. So if you go on their website, it's not really clear. However, if you go and, and look from their like uh, download server, you can reach through HTML, you're going to find a lot, lot, lot of version of Rocky Linux. So obviously there is not, you know, like the type of choice you will find on Arch, but the main uh, desktop environment are there out of the box for the live image and you can install them uh, right off the bat, so which was kind of surprising because I wouldn't expect that from them. It's, it's, you know, it's a corporate type of uh, Linux distro and I will think they will just focus on one desktop environment. So that's, that's a positive. The second one is related to the installation. The installation was super smooth. I really enjoyed my time there. I didn't have to tweak the bootloader. I didn't have to do nothing, even if I have an NVIDIA card. Everything went really well. To give you an idea what it look like, it will be like a, a Fedora installation. If you are more used to this type of installation, uh, this is Anaconda, if I remember correctly, and the installer is pretty straight to the point. Y you won't have to do anything crazy there. It's super smooth. So again, a good point uh, for Rocky Linux there. Now, when it comes to the installation of the NVIDIA driver, you know, sometimes it's a pain. I had this terrible experience with Debian, which is also another like stable uh, type of distro. And it was a real pain. The, the drivers, they were half installed when you, you use their repo, etc., etc. I don't even want to go there. I invite you to watch the video I made on Debian. 
even if I love the distro. It was a mess. Here, super straight to the point. You go to their website, you, you type like two command line. You have to use the terminal. Obviously, it's not the experience you would have on a Linux Mint, for example, where you have a little applet and you click on a button. You have to use the terminal. However, it is almost, I would say now, it is perfect. Everything works. You have the support of Secure Boot. You have also almost the latest driver for NVIDIA, the 550. I don't think it's the latest, latest version within this version of the driver, but still, they are top-notch. And you have the opportunity also to install CUDA if you want to use AI or anything. Like Everything is there. Uh, I would say like a really good experience there. Another positive, which is related to the fact that you're going to be stable. I already mentioned that in the intro and the definition of the, of the distro itself. But this is corporate enterprise Linux distro. It is not going to have any bug, anything related to having like new software that might create instability on your system. This is going to be rock solid. So if you need uh, this type of like distro to work and want to make sure that Every time you press the button to launch your computer, everything is going to be smooth. You're going to get that with Rocky Linux because in the corporate world, it has to work no matter what. So another good point there, if you are really looking towards the stability for your work or whatever you do on your computer. So when it comes to content creation, I want to say that this is super solid. First thing first, even if it's a stable distro, they still use like Pipewire. So you will have Pipewire. You don't have to go uh, through, you know, upgrading that because I know some of the other distro, like they, they are still using like Pulse Audio and whatever. Here it's Pipewire. Perfect. That's a good point. Second point is company like Blackmagic. They literally support their software. I'm talking here about DaVinci Resolve for this distro. I think if you, if you go on their website, they kind of recommend CentOS. Well, CentOS does not exist anymore. So now it's more like Rocky Linux. All their installation, everything is ready for this distro, like this specific distro. There is no tweak. So you download it, you install it, it works out of the box, you have nothing to do. Now, when it comes to OBS, you're going to have to install it through Flatpak. And Flatpak on paper is a version you should use, which is the version that OBS Studio team like recommend. So you won't have any problem with it. I would say overall, I, I like myself using the native version because it creates less problem than going through Flatpak. But for a common use, you're going to have maybe a little bit more work to set it up correctly through Flatpak, but it should be working. So now we cover all the positive. Let's talk about the negative. When it comes to gaming, you're going to be able to install Steam via Flatpak. No problem. However, the performance, it won't be top-notch. And when I'm saying top-notch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make like three categories here, okay? I'm going to say low performance here. I will say mid-performance, which will be like super acceptable by 99% of the users there. And the third one will be like pro gamer, okay? Like just to give you an idea. This distribution out of the box as it is, is on the lower bracket. And it's in the lower bracket for a simple fact that it comes with a really, really old kernel. So if you run a benchmark like we did live, and I'm going to put a link to the description below for the, the full video. I think it's like a three hour video. If you want to watch it, uh, you go, you click on it, and you're going to have all the detail of me testing this distro. And also, uh, while we are there, like just uh, press this like button and, and subscribe to the channel because it really helped me and really like support the channel itself, like the growth of the community. So uh, if you can do that, that would be great. If you want to do more, I have a um, Patreon membership with a link below here and also a YouTube membership. So if you want to support financially the channel, it would be great. I would really appreciate it. Thanks in advance. Let's go back to the review here. Gaming by itself is not, again, like the best out of the box. The benchmarks, they will give you like good FPS, but you will see like your minimum, they're going to be pretty low. And the only way to uh, mitigate that is to start to tweak the distro. Is it hard? Ah, uh, not at all, because we already installed the driver. And I think the, the part which is super important, in my opinion, is the kernel. Just by upgrading the kernel, you're going to be 
a step above, right? You're going to be in the second bracket in terms of like gaming performance. And I proved it. For example, on Tomb Raider, we went from a, a minimum FPS, if I remember correctly, it was like around like 240 FPS minimum. And when I upgraded the kernel, I went around like 270 uh, for the minimum FPS. And it's a big bump, right? Because it means like your game is going to stutter less. You're going to have a more smooth experience uh, with a custom kernel. That's, that's kind of a negative because obviously the performance for gaming is not really out of the box. You're going to have to get there. But that's a price to pay if you want to rock uh, a stable Linux distro. The second point I want to mention is related to the packages. Okay, so the packages, they are really, really old. It's part of the distro itself, obviously. But man, like this, this really sucks. So if you want to avoid that, you're going to have to use Flatpak or you're going to have to use a third party repo or you're going to have to compile them yourself. I know some of you don't care, but it's something to take in consideration. Okay, like when you are unstable, you need to have packages which are like, hold to minimize the bug and the error possible related to them. And obviously, like uh, this distro is going to have a lot of old packages. So if this is something you are looking forward, for example, you want the last, latest version of FastFetch or like maybe you want the latest version of Kitty, well, you are not going to have it out of the box. So what are we going to do about this Linux distribution? Well, it's pretty fun. OK, like I want to tell you, it's pretty fun because when I started this little challenge on stream, I thought it would be really complicated. And I have to tell you guys, the experience was better than Debian. And, and dude, I'm going to repeat myself here, but I love Debian. But this distro is doing a better job. If you are looking for a distro which is stable, a distro uh, which you won't have really to upgrade or like do some type of like crazy version upgrade in the long term, this distro might be for you. When it comes to content creation, I think if we really like focus on content creation, there is no issue at all. Uh, outside of the fact you're going to have to use OBS Flatpak, but again, like it was working perfectly here, like the experience was great. It might be complicated when you start, you know, to, to play with Flatseal, to give the permission to all the Flatpak application you might have to use there. But Overall, I would say it's, it's, it's solid. I was pretty impressed by it. Now for gaming, you're going to have to tweak it a little bit, but it's not that hard either. At least it was not as hard, for example, as, as tweaking a Debian, for example. So I would say it really depends on your usage, but Rocky Linux was kind of a surprise to me. Like really, a really, really good surprise. I, I really enjoyed it. And um, it's not what I want right now. But I'm thinking in the future, you know, when the NVIDIA drivers are totally uh, supporting Wayland and Plasma 6 become the new, you know, like stable version for this type of distro, I'm thinking maybe this is what I need. Just a distro that works all the time. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next one. And uh, until then, take care of yourself. Bisous, bisous. See you.